Okay, people, we're back for today's second segment of the show, The Prophet Speak. Prophet Tom Ingham live in the studio Tuesday morning. Listen, people, my lines are already open, 1-800-782-0108. When you begin to look at what we're talking about, the foundation of a believer, you have to have faith. And if you don't have faith, you're not none of God's. If you don't have faith, you don't have a spirit. So there's no way you can be God's. You can't be proud of God's property if you ain't got God's spirit. You can't have God's spirit and don't have faith. People want you to believe that, well, if my faith ain't at that level, what, what you mean, what level? If my faith ain't at that level that I, 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 don't, I, I still use medication and go to doctors, that don't mean I ain't got the Holy Ghost. When, let's look at what you're saying. You saying that you got the Holy Ghost did it lead you to the doctor? See, the scripture talks about the Holy Ghost. How be it, Jesus said in John 16, 13, when the spirit of truth is coming, the leading guide you in all truth. When you see the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will do the leading. It's going to lead you to believe, your, believe God. See, you don't believe God on your own. It takes the spirit of God to believe God. But you want folks to believe that you are a man of God and you ain't got no faith in God healing you, but he healed, but you preaching God's a healer, but you don't believe it. So with that being said, where's the spirit? You'd have the word of God, but you turn to first, Corinth, the first book of Corinthians, second chapter, and look at verse 12. Give you a second to turn there, let me see if these messages. Remember my lines are open though, don't, don't, don't let me Stop you from calling in with a question or whatever. 1-800-682, I mean 1-800-782-0108. Don't allow me to stop you from calling in. In the first book of Corinthians, in the second chapter, in verse 14, Paul says, Now we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Not the things which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now, how are you going to compare healing to doctors and medication? Did you not just hear what that scripture said? Now, we have received not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are Freely given to us of God. Oh, free. Wait a minute. That changed the whole game, don't it? With you and your medication and believing that God, you doctors and medication. That's not free. That's a long way from free. Matter of fact, it's the biggest debt in this country. The biggest debt in this country is the medical bills. Biggest dead in the country. Dealing with the cost of medication, drugs, operation, doctors, all the other health aids, you all say, health aids. See, we saints, we don't we don't compare the stripes on his back to that to that to that uh to that prescription you got to get filled out. Or your or all that stuff in your medicine cabinet. We refer everything back to him that's invisible, that we've never seen with our own eyes. We've never seen Jesus, but we believe by his stripes we're here because he said it through his prophet Isaiah and then through the apostle Peter. We believe it. We believe in James 5 and 14 that if the elders are called on and they anoint you with all, I myself as one, anoint you with all, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, because we believe in that name. We do all things by that name, because that name got the power. It's a powerful source. It's the power to create the heaven and earth, to hang the moon and the sun. Oh yeah. That's the same name we use in the prayer of faith, asking God to make you whole. And with that being said, it don't cost you nothing. We don't charge you for that. It's freely given. 
because that's faith in God. But that medication, them doctor appointments, that medicine cabinet, you bought everything in there, you paid for every bit of it. Your operation, you pay for that. Some of you like to hold my insurance and pay for it. You pay the co-payment. Shut up. Don't start no line. And then you had to take, they take money out of your check for that insurance. Go on somewhere. You ain't gonna, see, you ain't going to get away with it. You want to. You want to get away with it and make it look like it can, we're going to refer this to God. No, nah, it ain't going to happen. Uh-uh. ain't going to happen. That's the thing that they don't like to talk about. Go, you won't see no video about this. I bet you don't. We ain't going to make no video about this. Because you stuck between a rock and a hard place on this one. Where are you going? You always want to debate and prove something. Prove that God used medication and doctors. I'll wait. Search the scriptures for any of you think you have eternal life. Search them and see if you see anywhere where Jesus put something down somebody's throat or told them to take something three, four times a day or gave somebody a shot or cut, with the cutting on folks and operating on folks. Uh-uh. And neither do he expect us to depend on that. Why do you think this, write this down, 1 Corinthians 2 chapter, verse 5, the Apostle Paul talks about, let not your faith stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. See, all y'all think them doctors are so wise, this and that, and that and this, they doing research. They, they, they coming up with, trying to come up with vaccines, and they trying to come up with cures, as y'all like to call them, cures. Jesus did cures by speaking and touching. The apostles did cures by speaking and touching. I do cures by speaking and touching, praying the prayer of faith or laying hands on you, anointing you all. That's how we operate, because we the body of Christ. We are of God. We are spiritual, and we, don't, we ain't charging you for that. It don't cost you nothing. Call me at any time. I had a phone call last night. They called from California about prayer. I can be reached at any time. You call me anytime. If you got my number, if you ain't got it, it's a reason you ain't got it. That means I don't trust you. And that's the problem with most folks. Folks think they can do stuff and say stuff and think can't be, they can't be figured out. But when the Apostle Paul said that we receive not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Not things, he, said, he talk about them speaking, not things that man's wisdom teaches, but that which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. We don't compare healing with what we see. Because our God is our healer, and we don't see him. But healing, as Jesus told the lady, healing is the children's bread. And Jesus already said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of his mouth. He's God. He came out, it came out of his mouth through his prophets and through his apostles. All scriptures gave by the inspiration of God. And these words came out of his mouth. So we don't live by physical bread alone. But children, the children of God, the children of Christ, Healing is, our, is the children's bread. That's what we live by. Not bread physically that you loaf up. Loaves of bread, huh? Healing is the children's bread. And if you can't believe you heal, you're not his child. That means that you're denying his power. And you're denying him because he the one said it. How can you think you could be saved by God? Because a lot of you like to holler, I know I'm saved, I know I'm saved. And why you don't know you healed? It's the same God to do the saving, do the healing. I know I'm blessed. Well, the same God to do the blessing, do the healing. I know I've changed. Well, the same God that, you know, changed what you say you was changed from, that's the one that changed your mind about doctors and medication as being your substance. See, when you're not conformed to the world but been transformed by the renewing of your mind, your mind don't think about 
prescribed drugs and medication and operations and doctor appointment, medicine cabinets in your house, in your bathroom. Don't talk about that. Therefore, because they don't talk about it, make me understand if your mind been changed, why are you still talking about it? Why are you still using it? Why are you still trusting in man? Why are you letting your faith stand in the wisdom of man and not the power of God? Explain to me. Because right now, these are, and I'm, and I'm really, I'm, I'm talking about these preachers because that's first of all I want you people to understand. And don't feel bad. I'm talking about them because they the one that caused you not to have faith in God because they didn't. They won't they go in the Bible and talk about everything else, but they won't talk about the power. They won't talk about the origin of your belief. It should start with healing. After you've been found out that Jesus Christ is God and that he rose himself from the dead, when you could look through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all you see is a bunch of healings and casting out devils. You see God's power. But then you're supposed to receive that power. Why haven't you received it? Because the people you've been sitting up under letting teach you, they don't have that power. Nor do they have faith in the power. So they let you stay just as corner minded as you was before you came to Christ, thinking that the medication doctors God is using. God got the doctors in the, on the earth for us. Who is us? Not the body of Christ. See, the body of Christ, his stripes, is, that's, what we, that's, that's what we're about. We're not with that, what y'all do. See, you still part of the world. You still corner-minded, natural-minded. And see, that's when you cannot receive. The natural man can't receive the things of the Spirit, the, the Spirit of God. The Scriptures say, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That's why you had that clown telling the people and did a video, he misinterpreted Romans 13. No, he misinterpreted that. You don't know God. So you ain't interpreting nothing from God. He didn't send you. You don't have faith. You weak. You a devil's minister. You go around just like the rest of these preachers, witchcrafting, bewitching people. The devil using you to preach all this, to teach all this old ignorant stuff. I always want to get in an argument. Prove this to me. Prove, I got nothing to prove to you. I tell you what you do. You prove Christ in you, but you can't. When the scripture says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you. You don't, he ain't in you. And you can't prove it. You got that medicine cabinet. If, you, if Jesus is in you, you wouldn't need no medicine cabinet. You wouldn't need no doctor's appointments. You don't need no glasses. I watch these folks. I just sit back and look at my town like, hmm. I see where your faith left. Stop at right there, don't you? Mm. See, but according to someone in Christ, according to their faith, be it unto them. Christ in me, I know I'm in Christ. I can ask over what I will. He said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you ask whatever you will, and it shall be done. I know how it feels to lose my whole sight and wait on the Lord to get it back. I ain't running and go nowhere to get no glasses. They were trying to use folks to bring me glasses. Put these on, see if you can see. Oh, yeah, I can see. Huh. No, you keep them. No, God going to get my sight back. I don't play that. I wasn't born with a pair of glasses on. I ain't leaving out here with a pair on either. I ain't knocking everybody to wear glasses. Everybody where they at because of where they faith at. I'm telling you what God don't give me. And much is given, much is required. And God proved a point to those that are around me to let them see. Uh-uh. You see how he depended on me? He, you see how he didn't turn the man devices? Uh-uh. I don't want him. You crazy. I'm going to stay crazy but I'm going to get my sight back and let's see how crazy you be when I get it. 17 odd days or a little bit more later, my sight was back and I got good sight. I could see so, I love my far off sight. I could see so far off. I love how God got there. I can be riding down the highway 
and you can see an exit. I can tell you the number of the exit and what's the, 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 the words on the exit. And somebody can call me and be like, man, how can you see that that far down the road? God gave me good eyesight. And when he, and when he, when he allowed the devil to say, oh, let, me, let me take his eyesight, let's see what he do then. The Lord said, go ahead. And I'm going to show you what he's going to do. He's going to come back to me and depend on me because he's mine. He's my child. He know my voice. He know he can trust me. I've given him faith. And what much is given, much is required. It's a lot expected out of me from God. Maybe not you all, but from God, it's a lot expected out of me. My line's open, 1-800-782-0108. And I don't care if y'all expect a lot of me because I'm going to try to fulfill it all, too. If I'm going to preach and teach you and be your minister, if you allow me to rule over you. See, some people say, where you get this rule over people at? The scriptures talk about that. And I think in the book of Hebrews, either 13 and 17. 13th chapter of the book of Hebrews, I think, in verse 17 says, Obey them that have the rule over you, for they watch out for your soul. See, the ignorant man who thought, Romans 13, when he said, For rules are not a terror unto good works, he thought that wasn't the man of God. You thought that was the governor, the police officer. When did police officers and governors watch out for your soul? When did they bear the sword of word, the word of God, which is a sword in vain? They don't. They don't have the sword. They don't watch out for your soul. You ain't been told to obey them in, in a sense like when God say obey the man of God. He said obey magistrates and all that too. But when he say obey them they have a rule over you for they watch out for your soul that they, they must give an account. I love how God can just bring these scriptures up out of me or run them up out of me because they in me. You can't be an effective man of God if you don't know the word of God, if you don't have faith in the word of God. I got faith in the word of God. You listen and you hang around and you listen to me preach and teach and you continue to let me minister to you, you're going to have the same like faith I got. You might be on prescription drug, but just keep listening to me give you these words, this, this gospel. When Paul said in Romans 1 and 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for there's a power of God and salvation. Keep listening to this gospel that I preach, the word of faith that God used me to preach. I guarantee you, I've seen it happen. Folks came around me, they was fully prescribed, sell by different prescriptions. I didn't tell them to stop taking it. I started preaching the word of faith. And when I started preaching the word of faith, they said, hey, and I talked about the testimony that God had given, used, get, that did what he had did for me. And then they started saying, huh, if God do it for you, he'll do it for me. And it's right there in the word. And I believe the word. God no respect the person. No doubt, you're exactly right. God is no respecter person, and that's for the body of Christ. But if you ain't part of the body of Christ, you'll never receive it. You'll never walk in it. You're going to trust man until they throw dirt in your face. You're going to be running, running behind the doctor trying to keep, him, to keep you on this earth as long as you can because you ain't got no faith in God, and you're not his child, and you call yourself a preacher, and that's the worst thing. You out here teaching people to deny the power, they, uh, the, the power of God. You teach them how to deny the power. And you teach them to be double-minded. God can do anything. God can do everything. He can heal you this way or that way. No, he can't. God can only heal you the way he said he can heal you. You can't bring God down to the corner man mindset. You didn't see Jesus operate in the corner when he did the healings on earth. How are you going to try to make it be so now it's different? Jesus Christ said, uh-uh, I'm the same today, yesterday, and forever. Don't play me. That's what he said in the book of Hebrew. Jesus Christ, the same today, the same today, yesterday, and forever. When he operated and demonstrated the power on the earth, there was no physical substance put down in nobody's mouth. He didn't shoot none in their arm. Mm-mm. Just ain't how he operate. And if you want him to be your Lord, you got to conform to what, he, well, how he operates. He ain't going to conform to you. You know, Scripture made it plain through his prophet Isaiah. God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways. As the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than yours. I don't play the, Jesus, you know, I don't play that corner game. 
I ain't into that hocus pocus witchcraft, the witch's brew, the drugs. He ain't into that. If you want to be his servant, if you want to be saved by him and healed by him, you got to come to him his way. He said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the way to be healed. I'm the way to be delivered. I'm the way to be saved. I'm the way to be blessed. You got to go search his ways out. But what happened, like this book of Hebrews talks about the people who he was grieved with, they have not known his ways. They, he said, they don't know my way. That's when he told them today, and I'm telling you the same thing today. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. I'm giving you scriptures. That's the voice of the Lord. That ain't mine. Them ain't my scriptures. I didn't write them. When I quote them to you, that's his words. And today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart as they did in the provocation, the day of temptation in the wilderness when your fathers proved and tempted me for 40 years, Jesus said. He said, I was always grieved with that, gener that generation because they always err in their heart. They do always err in their heart. He said, so I swear in my wrath, they were not, in my wrath, they would not enter to my rest. See, you people don't understand. It angers God when you don't have faith in him. It angers him, and you're seen as evil because you believe in a man, a creation, a thing that God, a creature that God created over God. You trusted in man, putting that stuff in your mouth, it's tearing up your body left and right, kidneys and liver, making you sick, the side effects worse than the effect that you went for. You went for this small situation. They gave you some medication. Next thing you know, you got worse effects from the side effects of what you, that little small issue you could have took to God because Jesus said, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. But you thinking, well, this ain't nothing right here. I'll take the Lord. I'm going to take it to the doctor and see if he give me something. Yeah, then he give you that. And then turn around and mess up something else. It's a domino effect. Dummy. Domino effect for a dummy. It's, tired of, it's, 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 it's time to stop being dumb. It's time to be wise. It's time to turn to our Lord and Savior. He already got the way made for us, but it's our fault if we don't go behind it. My line's open, 1-800-782-0108. If you don't follow this instruction, that's you. When Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it's the power unto God, uh, of God unto salvation to the, uh, to the Jew first, then to the Greek. He said there in verse 17, and therein, talking about the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, from one belief to the next. And it's evident that the just shall live by faith. See, the just, we live by faith. We don't walk by sight. We know there's a difference than when we was in the world or what we thought was for our health to when we come in Christ, we find out, oh, he is our health. He is our healer. Now, we get rid of that old mindset because we become a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have come new, and all things are of God. That's what the scriptures say. When you hear me, this is what scriptures say. I'm not making this up. My line's open, 1-800-782-0108. We got people who been trying to preach and teach to you saying that you can get faith by what they preaching. They ain't even got faith by it. How you gonna get it? The only thing you gonna have that they got, y'all gonna have in common, is that medicine cabinet and them doctor's appointments and getting them prescriptions filled out. That's what y'all gonna have in common. But we the saints, you know we got common. You know we got in common. We got the same spirit and the same spirit of faith that raised Jesus from the dead. We got that in us. So guess what we're saying? And guess what we got? We got healed by his stripes in us. We don't, we don't roll like y'all roll. All y'all raised up in them denominational churches, you know what I'm talking about. They got a sick and shut in list. When they're reading the, um, when they're reading the, um, program for the service that day is the funniest thing in the world. They'll read the sick and shut in list. Who's sick and shut in? Why you ain't go pray for them where they can be in there with you? Why you ain't go lay hands on them? Why y'all didn't bring them down to the pastor? For the pastor to 
to lay hands on him. You know why y'all didn't? Because y'all know the pastor gets sick. He go to the doctor too. He ain't got no power. Ain't you seen a bit? You might well skip the middle, man. Go on to the doctor. That's what y'all mind says. So, oh, I'm going to go get prayer in church. But if it ain't no better by in the morning, because that's Sunday. But if it ain't no better by in the morning, I'm going to the doctor's office Monday morning. I know. See, you were doing that for you call yourself meeting Christ or, being, or, or saying that Jesus was your Lord. See, Lord means provider. Before he was your provider, you did that. Now that you got a provider, you're going to be doing something different. You both do what your provider told you to do, but you don't do that. You're supposed to trust what your provider, your Lord, told you to trust. But you don't. But you still think you're saved. You think, I'm going to be saved, I'm still going to heaven, and, I'm, and, I, and I got the Spirit of God in me. No, the Spirit of God, don't, it don't uh, work in carnal. It don't, it don't lead you to carnality. It don't lead you to side effects. It don't do that. My line's open. 1-800-782-0108. See, when I started talking like this, no, no callers. Um, no, it won't be no videos done. They, 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 they won't do videos talking about this. They're going to play like they didn't see this one because this one exposes them with their medicine cabinets, their appointments, doctor appointments. It exposed them. Sure enough, do. Got them in a bad place, too. They exposed bad. Exposed bad. 1 800 782 0108. What is it going to take for you to understand it? Hebrews 11 6 said, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So don't think you're pleasing God when you're still walking in that carnal mind and you still don't believe that you're healed by his stripes. You still got your medicine cabinet. You still up under a doctor, as y'all like to say. Y'all put yourself in some place. I'm up under him. You? Yeah? Mm. Up under that spell? You under a spell? I'm up under a doctor. Yeah, it's a spell. That's why he give medication. It's called witchcraft. He bewitching you. You go with one for one situation, and the longer you stay, the more situations you start getting and the more medication he's prescribing you. How foolish are you not to see this? You can go for your toe getting jammed up. He going to give you medication that's going to cause other things to be messed up. And then you're going to have to, you know, the side effects of what he gave you in that medication, you have to start taking another medication because the side effects that that medication called. It's just like a domino effect. Then you're going to take another medicine for that side effect that that medicine, the second medicine he gave you. Then the third medicine, fourth medicine, all of them keep having side effects, giving you side effects. Next thing you know, you got a bag full of medicine. In a day's time, you've been told three or four times a day to take about 10 or 15 other pills. I'm telling you what I know for a fact that people do. They personally, they got that many pills. You ought to think to yourself, something can't be good about the lining of my stomach putting all this foreign substance in here. It'd be different if you put some cornbread, some turnip greens, and chicken, pork chop, pinto bean. It'd be different if you put 10 different foods in you. But this ain't food. This got side effects, and then you get another side effect that you got to have deal with, and the doctor can keep prescribing you medication. And I just want to know what part of you don't look, that, that you don't understand that the doctor now is your drug dealer and you his junkie. At what point you don't see that? You can sit there and be sophisticated and play stupid and not want to call in and say, you know what? I've been convicted if you want to. But what part of you don't see that? And then y'all have enough nerve to talk about other folks on street drugs. Ain't no different than you being on them prescription drugs. Both of you on drugs. I see two drug users. I see two junkies when I'm looking at a person on, that's addicted to street drugs and I see another person that's taking prescribed drugs. I see two junkies. That's all I see. My line's open, 1-800-782-0108. Go do your video now. Stupid bastards. Go do your video now. See, because the devil give you a message against this one. And then the mark of the beast coming. You're going to take that mark of the beast to get to them drugs that you believe that are keeping you alive. Yeah, 
the devil don't, the, the devil don't use that doctor to put your confidence in him instead of Jesus, and you ain't paying no attention. You've been bamboozled. You've been slipped a Mickey. You know, the devil don't slip you a Mickey. You know, when you slip your Mickey, what happened? Everybody got slipped a Mickey. Most time, people, they slip them a Mickey where they get raped, take advantage of them. The devil don't rape y'all. He's steady raping y'all, raping your, raping your money, raping your body, your temple with all them side effects in it. Like the scripture said about the woman with the issue of blood. She didn't grow better. She grew worse. And the doctors had beat out all the money. You don't want to talk about that, do you? Go do a video about that. Go do, 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 go do a video about that because you don't probably got worse too with your doctor appointments, visitation, your health don't decline since you start going for this one thing and then he go by 10 things you got now. But you didn't pay attention to that. And you don't want to talk about it while I'm talking about it because you know what, you, you, I want to ostracize my messages, sit up and criticize my messages. that are coming right out of the gospel. It's the apostles' doctrine. What excuse are you going to make now? Go make a video. What's the excuse? Go make a video and tell people what the excuse for going to the doctor when you sick. The scripture says if you sick, call for the other. Then tell you go to the doctor. Then some of you go to the doctor, ain't even sick. Then they diagnose you. Now you're looking simple. You're in the valley of decisions. You had been claiming by stripes you were healed, but you went to the doctor and they told you we did some blood work, some paperwork, you got cancer. What you do then? Oh, oh, Lord, I need prayer. I got cancer. Who told you you had cancer? Just like he asked Adam, who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? Who told you you had cancer? The devil? So the devil your God now? See, we let our Lord tell us what we are. We are the redeemed. The scripture said, let the redeemed say so. We are the healed. See, the Lord told us by his strife, we were healed. We, we are, see, we, we believe what our Lord say, and we repeat what our Lord say. You believe what your Lord say, which is Satan, the devil, the doctor. The doctors are y'all prophets. You let them be your prophets. You let, them, you let them be your God. You let them take over your health. Now it's the saints. We believe God. We don't have no, we don't need no copay. We don't need no blue cross blue shield. We don't need none of that. We, be, we ain't going nowhere to sit in no room after they ran tests and sitting in the room scared to death, wondering what they're gonna come back and tell you. You think I, you people see you people not looking at this thing from a viewpoint of what how much torment you go through when you don't believe God. How much torment you go through when you don't trust God. You can go trust this man and you sit there shaking by yourself in that room. I heard so many people talk about it. After they go to the doctor, they might not be feeling well. They won't know what's going on. It's days that I don't feel well. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't take a mind and say, I wonder what's going on. I already know what's going on. He's still on the throne and by his stripes I'm healed. And he in me, Christ in me. Hey. I don't do no wondering. I couldn't live some of you lives, people lives. I couldn't, I couldn't walk in some of you people's shoes. I thank God what he had brought me to and continue to take me to. Because that's crazy. I'll be the first to tell you, that is crazy. That's my brother out of uh, North Carolina, I think. One said, facts, preach, so true. God bless you. Appreciate you. God bless you. He sent me with truth. He sent me with power. I've seen God use my hands and lay hands upon people with cancer and God get the cancer out. We didn't, we went, we didn't fly over to Kansas City to one of them cancer treatment centers. We don't do that. See, we don't need no money for no plane. Huh? Huh? Cancer treatment. The CDC, Center of Disease Control, the Holy Ghost control the diseases, in the, but with the saints, they get them out of them. If they, anybody who come that's not a saint, that believe that God can heal them through a man of God, they can receive it. And then God put his spirit in them, then they live in a different life. But the cancer gone. See, we'll do all that old mess. That's, that's stuff y'all do. All that chemo and radiation. 
of the devil. You can see the chemo when they're putting it in. They do the, it's, it's supposed to be in a, the chemo is like a liquid. The radiation, you can't see that, but it's just like a bomb. It's going to tap everything when it get inside you. Oh, yeah. When that thing say radiation, stay away. People stay away from it. When they got cancer, radiation, they go to the radiation. They, they say they got cancer, they go to the radiation. Make it make sense. If the radiation is harmful in a bomb, I was in the military. Radiation was in the bombs we shot. I was field artillery, 13 Bravo, field artillery. We had nuclear capabilities. Nuclear weapons or radiation would suck the meat off your bones. That's why when people get cancer, and they go over there and take that radiation chemo, that's when they begin to be bald headed. Not like me, half all out, I keep it cut low. No, it knock it out. The chemo and radiation knocked them five, knocked the meat off their bone and knocked the hair out of their head. And they say that's treatment. Now that's mistreatment. You some stupid bastards. And I don't feel sorry for you. Because it's the craziest thing in my life in my lifetime since I've been here to see this is the craziest thing. You don't know somebody before they had cancer. You saw what chemo and radiation done to them. Now why are you going to go over there just like you a buffalo, like you ain't got no sense, more sense than a buffalo? Some of you saying, what do you mean by sense of a buffalo? I used to watch them early films where they showed them buffalo hunting and the buffaloes being big herds. And the men would go right up to them with them musket guns and big loud guns and shoot them. They'd shoot one. The other ones wouldn't run. You think they'd run from the loud sound. They wouldn't. They move just enough out of the way for that buffalo to fall dead right there. Just enough for the people who shot the buffalo to come and get it. But they didn't have enough sense to know. He fell dead. Can we not? But they're animals now. But I'm just saying this to show you, you must ain't got much animal sense. He fell dead. We heard a loud boom first, and then he fell dead. We just move out the way and stay there and keep on grazing. Them animals, I don't expect no more out of them. You, you people are humans. If you knew somebody that had cancer and they went and took chemo and radiation and they died, chemo and radiation and they died from, the, they didn't die from the cancer. Most people die from chemo and radiation. They listed as cancer killed them. Most time it's the chemo and radiation. Because chemo, you didn't know what that was, neither did you. Chemo is a substance that they used in the Vietnam War. People don't, you better go do your, it's, it's a nerve agent gas, a nerve agent uh, liquid. It's a nerve agent. It kills. It was used to be killing people in war. Both of them, chemo and radiation, was used to kill people in war. Like, the nerve, it's a nerve agent. They tell you now, but well, it's, it's, well, we're going to use it for good right here. Oh, because why? We doctors. We're going we gonna to use it for good. It's going to knock this cancer out. Yeah, but it's going to knock out these cells that I need to live too. Yeah, it's going to kill some good cells and some bad cells. It's just a chance we got to take. Now it's a chance you're going to take. I took my chance and got rid of all my chances and put all my trust in the Lord. So it ain't a chance. It's trust. When you trust Jesus, there ain't chances. You ain't gambling. You ain't, basically, you ain't, it, ain't a, it ain't a risk factor in this because Jesus can't lie if you believe him. But if you don't believe him, man, listen. All I can tell you is, Bye-bye. You're going to be out of here like last year. This is what people don't want. People don't want truth. You want to sit up under these ministers who ain't got a lick of faith. God gave me common sense. That ain't common sense. That's conformed to the world sense. You do what the world do. And you call it common sense as if it's a righteous thing. Uh-uh. You need spiritual sense. You need faith. Spiritual sense start with faith. God cannot build you up and grow in you if you don't believe him. It's not going to happen. The relationship is it's not going to be one. Without faith, Hebrews 11 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Those that come to him must first believe that he is. 
He's God. And then he's what? A rewarder to those that diligently seek him. And they told you I was coming off a teleprompter. Now these scriptures are coming up out of my heart where the Lord lives and where the Lord bring them to my remembrance. They told you I was reading off a teleprompter. One of the best compliments I ever had. Please continue to compliment me. It don't hurt a bit. But my God is powerful. And he, what he uses is sharper than any two-edged sword. I'm more than a conqueror in him. But no, people want to trust man where you can get conquered. Maybe it's going to take a lot more side effects to get you to turn away from what you're doing and turn to God. The side effects killing you. Christ can raise you up from that sickness. That's what Paul was saying. That's what James was saying. Is any sick among you? Call for the elders. Let the Lord... You let them anoint the, the elders anoint you with all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And, and, he, and it's a, spec, a, a special package to go with that. The next verse says, and if he committed any sins, they shall be forgiven. Can your doctor forgive your sins? When the last time the doctor, doctor gave you a prescription and then told you, oh, yeah, by the way, go take that to the pharmacy. By the way, uh, your sins are forgiven. He can't do it. He's not been ordained to do it. The forgiveness of sins go right along with it. My line's open. 1-800-782. We got a caller? Sister Brown. Hello, is it Sister Brown? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Prophet. How you, How you doing? doing? I'm doing fine. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful. I just called in to agree with what you're saying. Amen. Because I'll be uh, trying to tell my loved ones, when you get that medicine that that doctor prescribed for you, read that paper. It's going to cause something much worse. And I still have faith. Mm -hmm. When you came here and laid hands on my grandson, mm -hmm. I still Still got faith that one day God is going to straighten his limbs and he's going to walk. Amen. I got, I got enough faith Amen. for him. I just told his parents, keep the faith. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about it, too. When you, As a grandparent, it's, 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 it's always in that area, you know, that is, I don't like to call it a gray area, but what I mean by that is the parents have to be involved also because it's their right. child. And, and the, the key thing is, I tell people all the time, I would never want to be the person that hold my child back from receiving something from God. See, when, it, when a child is a child, the parents, you know, it's in the Word of God all the time. They took their children to Jesus. The ones that believe in Jesus healed them. Amen. But if they took them over there and they didn't believe, Jesus couldn't do nothing. I'm going to tell you something that people don't pay attention to. When you go back and you read when Jesus went back to Nazareth, this is after he had went forth and made and got fame everywhere by the healings he was doing. When he went back home to Nazareth, the scripture said that even Jesus could not do many mighty miracles because of the people unbelief. I'm we talking about God on earth could not do many mighty miracles. The scripture said he laid hand on a, a couple of, of, of sick folk, only a few sick folk. But he couldn't do the mighty miracles in Nazareth, and that's when Jesus made it known. A prophet is not, has no honor in his own town. He don't have no honor in his own city, his own town, his own country. Yes, but I know God can heal. There you go. Still healing. Mm-hmm. And I, like I said, you are a man of God. Amen, I am. Like I said. From the first time you came here and laid hands on me, Amen. it's been a whole total difference in my life. Amen. That's and God. I've been feeling good in my body. Amen. I thank God for you. Cause... Just... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Go ahead. I, I was about to say, when uh, 
I really got to uh, listen to you. And like you say, you're right. I be trying to tell them, y'all listen to some of his faith tapes. It'll help you have faith. Because mm-hmm. it brought me more. I always have faith mm-hmm. that uh, God can heal me with that medicine. Mm-hmm. But since I've been listening to you, I got more faith than I ever had. Mm-hmm. And I'm still listening to you so I can continue to have faith. Because I don't care. What hurt me now? Mm-hmm. I go to God and pray. Mm-hmm. I ask Him to help me bear it. That's it. And you know, I just forget about it. The next thing is gone. You That's, know, He don't answer all your prayer. All I can say is thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He be don't answer your prayer. And I thank God. I remember when I first time I came down. But I remember when you first talked me on the phone. Your your testimony was so identical to a sister that was in Florida. Because she told me the same thing that you said. Said she was sitting there and saying, man, this ain't getting it right here. Before, yeah, yeah, you say, y'all yeah, begin to pray to God. Send somebody that can teach me and, 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 and instruct me in your word and in righteousness. And then she said the same thing. Next thing you know, I pop up on the television. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. I thank God I've had that's that testimony so many times. That's but. exactly happened. And like I said, when my fiance was sick, mm-hmm. Lord, I was just praying who is a real prophet. Mm-hmm. But the only thing I hate that I didn't find you before he passed. I, I say I still believe in my heart. If I could have found you then, I still say he would be here now. Oh, oh, I definitely would pray the prayer of faith. And if he if he believes like you believe, it'll God move. See, a lot of times it ain't the man of God that people need to be paying attention to. It's the people who have faith. In right. the man of God, have faith in God and in the man of God, and that's what they're looking for. Cause that's why God got us here. That's why He tell you call for the elders. He gave us the prayer of faith. But y'all have to believe in the man of God mm-hmm. and in God. You have to believe in God. I, I hate, I hate, cause I, after I thought about it, mm-hmm. I saw all these people that I was calling. Mm-hmm. Thought they was closer to God than I was. I said they wasn't near closer to him as I was. I said because all of them go to the doctor. Mm-hmm. And I thought about that. I said, I don't even go to the doctor. Mm-hmm. And all these people that I was, I was just desperate. Mm-hmm. And everybody that I thought could send up a powerful prayer. Mm-hmm. That's who I would call it. But I understand, I realize now my prayers were more powerful than theirs. Yeah, because you got to look at this here. If how can they prayer not help them, but it help you? It don't. You got to be able to believe your own prayer. If you can't show me like Paul, like James said, show me that faith by that works. Faith without works is dead. You have to have faith and works. If a man say that he's of God, and he say, but I go to the doctor. And I use medication, but he wants you to pray for him. I mean, like when you get sick, he wants you to come, you, he'll pray for you. If his prayer don't work for him, how's it going to work for you? And you know, I said that one time. They used to be in church, and I stopped people from laying hands on me because that's exactly <laughs> what I said. I said, now, if they can lay hands on me and heal me, why can't they heal themselves? That's right. Well, right. Said, well, they can't heal they still. They can't heal me. Silver and gold have I none it's such true. that I have. They don't have it. They don't. They don't. They really don't. Mm-mm. But won't you but, believe um, it? I'm just, I keep listening to your face tape. I almost got my friend, she, the one that uh, I introduced you to. Uh-huh. She almost there. She almost there. I tell her, Evelyn. Keep listening to the faith, prophet. Faith come by hearing and hearing faith. the word of God. Faith come by hearing. If you keep listening, you keep listening, there's no way. It's just like Jesus said, and me and Brother Mike Ford had this conversation the other day. If the script say, he that seeks shall find. If you right. seek, you're going to face a promise. It's one of God's precious promises that a lot of people have overlooked because they're not seeking. But if you seek, you shall find. There's no way. It's a foolproof plan. If you keep hearing the word of God, that's going to give you faith. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's Romans 10 and 17. Romans 10 and 17. Yes. And I enjoy your tapes. And I'm praying to God that I can do better by the offerings because I want you on here as much. 
As much as I can see you on him, I, I go back to the old tape. Uh-huh. I do. I look at. I look you were like, mad. You were. You were mad at me yesterday, was? You? Oh no, no, no! Because <laughs> we didn't get here to five o'clock. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's right, guys. You came from Florida. That's right. Uh huh. Yeah, we didn't get back to about five o'clock, but I came in here and started look, looking at, watching some of your uh, old tapes. I said, this, this will sustain me until tomorrow. I said, I know we're going to be there tomorrow. <laughs> You're right, Lord. We don't allow that to be that day. But I tell you, uh, the, the things I got going on, I appreciate your offerings. You've been great. And, and the things I'm trying to get the other people that's after that they got offerings, I will be on more when I do the television publicly <laughs> and the radio. It's, it's, that's going to be on YouTube and on the public radio at the same time, and I'll still be right here. So I'm going to be having more days where I am on and just trying to get do as much as I can and be used by the Lord as much as I can possibly be used. Uh-huh. But I did. Oh, I, had, I had had some of your cards in my purse. Uh-huh. But uh, I had them uh, changed purse, and I didn't put them in there because I thought about it. If I'd have, I would have put some of them out where I was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. I really would have. Okay. But I put, put them out around in different stores around here and hoping to pray to God that mm-hmm. somebody can hear, listen, uh, get one and listen to your word and come on and follow us with God. Amen. It's gonna get out. We're gonna we're gonna ne- we're gonna network this thing on the ground and in the air and the radio and television yeah. ways. But I'll be telling everybody. I I I, I give them a live testimony because people be looking, seeing me, mm-hmm. be talking. About, Why she you don't ever age? I said, yeah, girl, I'm aging now. I said, God <laughs> just aging me gracious. I said, cause I ain't on none of them folks' medicine. <laughs> I promise you that that, that medication stuff will tear you down, I and mean, it, it do it. It will. It, it does, and people do. The doctors tell them, and that's the part of, part about it. It's not like I'm trying to convince some people about something they don't already know. The doctors don't told you they got side effects. They make you sign off waivers because they don't want to be responsible with, if you can't sue them and this and that. They do it with the operations. They do it with the medications. Right. And, and, and mean, listen, hey, trusting in God is so good and it got so many benefits behind it, like you said, because I didn't never believe you was your age when I seen you. So I'm like, this is what God can do. And people don't want to look at that. But hey. Now they don't want to believe it, but I said, no, I've never. They, I, you know, like I said, I did used to go to the doctor. But if they write me a prescription, we go in the trash can, <laughs> and I come home, and I, I did used to find me some natural herb medicine that might help it. Mm-hmm. But I ain't even been doing that no more. <laughs> now, you, now you got the stripes now. You ain't got to do that. God you got them stripes good. on Jesus' back. You right. Well, listen, sister, it's my time to get up out of here. I sure appreciate it. I'm going to see y'all, Lord's willing, in the morning, and I'll be back on again. Okay. You have a blessed one. Okay. Call me if you need me. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Love you, Love you too. Bye-bye. You out there to have offerings, people. We finna go off the air for the day. Lord's willing to be back with us willing in the morning. But you to have offerings, continue to give throughout the day until I come back on. We need to get... We really need a, a, a good thing amounts of finance because I'm going to be doing two and three different things. It was three, really, three things to network and get us out there. Got to get out of this corner. 1-800-782-0108. Call me tomorrow morning if you need questions over this message. Go back and listen to this message. And then go back and listen. And if you got questions, I'll answer them tomorrow. But cash up, dollar sign, my bus, zero one two three four. Listen, give or give me a call or leave a call with the producer if you, you know, want to give another kind of way. But people will see you, Lord's willing, tomorrow. T.J. Graham going to take us out of here. He's going to tell you why I put, tell you to put your trust in the Lord. I'm going to let you down. God going to let you down. Telling all of you people back here. Down there, God won't let you down. God won't let you down. God won't let you down. We telling all of you people right here in this town that God won't let you down. Do you remember the story about Moses? 